Hello everybody and welcome to our tutorial on UE Draw. This is a fantastic program because it gives you a lot of options that the professional program Adobe Illustrator gives you. Uh, and the best thing about it is you can go on the internet and you can get access to that program there. You do not have to have the program actually loaded into your computer. So what you need to do to start off with is get to the actual site called uedraw.com. Once you get to uedraw.com, then you come to this front page. So you would like to get started, so start now. I've already actually signed in, and I've signed in with my um, Google account. But you can um, sign in using any fashion that gives you the option to do so. So you need to sign in as well. You can see here that I'm signed in with my account with Google+. Okay, so we want to start from blank. Even though there are a lot of different options here, I'm going to teach you what to do in blank first so that you can create things from the beginning. Now, there are options here to do things using their templates to start off with, and that might be a great option if you want to design something very quickly. But in this particular case, we're going to start from blank. So, start from blank. Now, when you get in, you'll be wanting to save whatever you do. So you touch that pencil there on the top left hand side. Save as. And I'm going to save this into my classroom folder. You can actually choose which drive you want here. Uh, as I said, I actually signed in with my Google account. And then you go OK. And here we are. UE Draw with all the bells and whistles. First of all, I think it's best that we go through here and we have a look at the tools and we find out exactly what they do and what we can do with them. So this side here is the tools. This side up here allows you to do things with your shape, which I'll talk to you about a bit later. Here are your layers. This is an important thing. You always start off with one layer and then you can actually add more. So layer one could be, for example, your background color. Layer two could possibly be um, some shapes and layer three could be say some text. You need to be clicked onto that layer to know that you're there. Now it's a good idea to always name things. So let's name this background. And layer two, right click, rename, we'll call this one shape. And layer three, rename, We'll call this one text. Okay, so now we have background, shape and text. We're never going to get lost. We know exactly what each one of these layers do. So let's start by looking at the shapes. Over here is some very, very simple shapes that you can be using. Let's start off with just a rectangle. And I'll draw that. Um, if you press your shift button at the same time, you'll find that you can actually constrain that meaning that it will stay a perfect square. But if you're not too worried about it, you let go of your shift and there you'll be able to move it and change it to however you like. So we're just going to go with just a simple rectangle like so. Now, at the moment, it has a stroke. If you look on the right hand side, you can see that it is ticked. Tick off, there is no stroke. Tick on, there is one. There are options here. So if I want the stroke to be a little bit bigger, a little bit thicker. Then I just simply move that or I could go like this and go five and we've got a nice thick outline. If I don't want to fill then I would tick off there but at the moment you can't see that that's been filled in with anything. So we can just double click on here. We can go to our colors and as you can see there's a variety and just say we like red. That looks good. Now you'll notice on top of here there is solid color, lineal gradient, radial gradient and pattern. So you don't have to necessarily fill just with a solid color. You can actually use some of these options here. Or you can get your own image. So you can actually import your own image and have that as your fill. With your radial gradient, all that means is the center is going to be whatever this color is on the left here, and the outside is going to be whatever color this is. 
So it's very easy to change the colour. So just say I want it to stick to my red. You can see now that this has got this interesting effect here. We can even add more to change the way it looks. Bring that a little bit closer. Drag that across there. So there are things that you can actually do with it. Also, you have little options here of how big that radius is going to be. The shape of it. And the angle. Opacity means do I want it to be a bit see-through or do I want it to be more solid? Here we have linear gradient and instead of it being from the center and outwards it will start on one side and then it will finish on the other. Once again you can change anything here. Turn that to blue if you wish. green and yellow. Looks quite horrible. However, you can see that there's lots and lots of options. So we're just going to stick with the solid color. Also, if you want to, you can go straight down here and have a look at some other options within or very close to that original color. Okay. The next thing I want to show you is this move tool. So you've got this wonderful shape, but you want to move it. You want to move it over to the left or the right. You simply grab this tool here, which is your move tool. If you leave your cursor over the top there or your little hand, you'll notice that it'll tell you what each one of these things will do. Okay, click on here now. Rotate. This one, scale. This one, skew. Now you can see how skew is just changing that so that it bends to the left or the right. So that is some of our options. When we use shapes, we can actually be coming in here and doing things with it as well. The next tool I'd like to show you is something that is incredibly powerful and something that you will need to know quite well. It's the pen tool. The pen tool allows you to draw with precision. So we'll click here, click there and drag. See how I'm pulling these levers? And that will give us a curve. Depending on where you pull those levers is in accordance to the shape that you will get. Okay, go to our move tool. Also, we'll go back to that tool. You'll notice when you start drawing that something comes up here. This is your fill tool, which means what's going to be happening on the inside. So if you draw a shape that is a little bit more organic or a little bit more freehand, You'll be able to color that with whatever color is in here. If you don't want it to color up, you simply click off. And generally when I'm drawing something, I usually have the fill off because it's a lot easier to see what I'm doing. And then I can just turn it back on later when I'm finished. The stroke is quite simply, and I'll just draw a very simple shape. Okay, finish that. The stroke is the actual size of the line. I can simply just type in there if I want to and boom. Very much like this. Okay, so now I've got options there. I can do the same thing with the dash, etc. Okay, and also I can change the color of my stroke. So if I want that to be red. Alrighty, say I'm not very happy with that shape. And I do actually want a fill as well. First of all, I would start playing around with the shape by using this tool here. So that will allow us to edit any shapes that we've created. Maybe I want to draw a bit of a cloud thing. Okay. 
Right, pretty bad, but we can fiddle around with it. I would probably add. See that plus sign? Click on it. Maybe add another shape there. And perhaps another one there. Pull that out. Fiddle around with it. Alright, so that's a rather simplistic looking cloud. We could do a better job if we mucked around with it a bit more, but for this purpose, I'll just show you that. Now, before I said that you can change the colour. At the moment it's white, so you won't see it, but maybe we want blue. Okay, so now we have a shape. We've used our pen tool. You can see how powerful it is. And when you use this tool here, the fact that you can actually change something. So if you make a mistake, you can go back, you can go to this tool that's the edit tool, and you can change the way that the shape is being produced. Okay, so I'm not very excited about that at all. I'd like to play around with it a little bit. You can see here in the properties there's other things that we can be doing. We can align that with other things. We can turn it around, move it to the side. Okay. Also in here, we have further options. Maybe I want a drop shadow. With that drop shadow, I might want to make the offset. See how that's moving across the angle, change that. Or perhaps this direction. I want it to blur a bit more, looks a bit fake. All right, that looks pretty cool. Maybe I want an inner shadow as well. So you can see here now that we've got a little bit of a shadow happening off that line. We can offset it. We can blur that. An inner glow. Sorry, outer glow. Same thing, you've got options. Inner glow. Maybe a reflection of a cloud underneath. Blur that. Change the light. All right. So let's turn all that off. Might lay that shadow. Okay, you can see here also that we have op other options with the shapes. You can make stars. So I'll just click off that make a star. Once again, if you use your shift button, you can see that it's constrained. If we go here, there are more options. So the more sides, you can see that you can change how far they come in from. Once again, you've got options for your fill and your stroke. Let's try another shape. Shift to constrain. Sides. Okay. Now, this tool here will allow us to move this around. So if we have magnified right up so that we can see what we're doing, this is when this tool becomes very handy. I can move it around so that I can see whatever I'm doing a lot better. For example, if I was to be playing with this and I did want to refine it a little bit further, it's going to be easier for me to be able to see. Pull that in like that. And as you can see, you can refine it a lot more when you're in. Now, once you're at 500, if you want to come back and you want to be able to see the whole thing, fit on screen. So this little thing over here, you can see that you can go up or down. Or once again, you can use this tool here. This one is for rubbing things out.
okay and this is your pencil tool pencil is for more freehand type of shapes like so you might want to write your name it does simplify itself so if it's a bit messy it will simplify it's not a great tool it's not something that I recommend you use you're better off much much better off to be using your pen tool which is this one over here okay and now we have our brush tool so fill and stroke fill won't make any difference with this tool okay So that's if you want to paint freehand. This tool over here is to just do a simple line. Okay. And lastly, we have this tool here called the text tool. You simply click on there, you type something. So we'll go CC Cloud School. Use our move tool. Pull it up a little bit. There we go. Cloud School. Um, there are options there as well. So we've got Arial. We can make that bigger. We can turn that into bold. We can make it italicized, underlined. and you can do this and it will stretch out but I found that it only works for some strange reason when you convert it to um, you saw there that I actually converted it to um, outlines outlines means that it's more editable in that you can do more with it okay so options once again you can actually use gradient you can use radial gradient you can give a pattern if you like so there are a few options there if you wanted it to be cloudy for example you could maybe get an image that is of a cloud and have that cloudy look now don't forget that we've got our special effects you can use drops drop shadows you can use inner glow so you can burn in there a little bit um, you can use reflection, so we've got a lovely reflection there. So you can imagine if you made it look a little bit more like a cloud, it could be quite interesting. Add a glow. In a glow, we can blur that a bit more or a bit less. Light. All right, so that is our text tool. All right, so I hope that you have learned a little bit more about this program you can see how powerful it is that was our shape probably what I should have done as soon as I started on that text is I should have really had that onto there but there's our shapes and then I would have had my text on there okay so remember that you do have layers you've got those options I might just delete that one it's not even being used so that is a fantastic program called UE Draw. This is the beginning. There are a few more things that we can do with that. And I'm going to give you another tutorial on using these particular tools up here and learning a little bit more about these. Okay, thank you. And oh, don't forget to save because I will want you to be saving everything that you do in here. Follow tutorials. So make sure you save and also export anything that you do. It will have a watermark, but I'm not concerned about that. Just go save file. OK. And here you can see that it's saved up there. So open up where you've actually saved that file. And then you can upload it to me a bit later on with your name. So if you can just save that as your name. And tutorial one for UE Draw, that would be great. OK, see you next time.